So there's a lot of tips and tricks that we share on this channel. You know, we try to talk about some action plans for you when you're going about things. But sometimes I think we need to take a step further back and we need to think more about, you know, I call these capacities. And so I've owned men pins for, you know, 15 years almost now. But if I was getting a new puppy today, these are the things that I would need to kind of take, you know, myself through. So this is kind of kind of be like a survey, you know, some questions you need to be asking yourself, um, you know, when you're going to be deciding to either get your first men pin or if you're going to be deciding to add a new men pin to your life. Hey guys, my name's Nate. Welcome back to the channel. If you're first time with us, thank you for being with us. Um, on this channel, we like to talk about all things men pins, from tips and tricks to you know training, uh, to sometimes talking about some you know kind of high level stuff like we're going to be talking about today. Um, so if this is your first time with us, please consider subscribing. Also, make sure you check down in the description for all of our products that we like to recommend, um, and they're always being updated. So definitely you know click on down there and check those out as well. Okay, so when I was deciding on how to do this video, I wanted to do it a little bit different. And so like I said, we're gonna be talking about the three capacities that you need to kind of check off when you're ready to move in getting you know, um, your next min pin. So capacity number one you need to think about is, that is your life capacity. So what do I mean by life capacity? A li life capacity basically is gonna be detailing a few things. Pretty much you need to take an inventory of your life as it stands and also how you see your life, you know, going out for the next 10, you know, to 20 years. Because you got to remember that at minimum, you have to plan for a min pin being in your life for at least 10 years. And that's honestly on the shorter end, you know, pending some type of, you know, devastating health condition or some type of accident that happens to them. Most min pins, you know, the average age is 12 to 14 years old. You know, mine are, you know, ones, you know, she's about to turn 15 this year. And then my other, he is uh, turning um, 14 this year. So both of them are, you know, past that point, right? And I've had, and so you got to think, and now my life has changed. You know, I was a college age kid when I got my first one and barely getting out of college when I got my second one. And you know, obviously since then I've had, you know, I've had children, I've, I've moved, you know, obviously I married back then and all those things. So a lot has changed and sometimes I've run into many challenges with that. Now I love my dogs that I wouldn't trade them for the world, but back then I didn't really think about that. And for some life's going to end up changing too much. And unfortunately that's how we end up with dogs that end up rehomed, dogs that ended up abandoned because they didn't take the right type of, you know, the life capacity. So you need to take a little survey of yourself and kind of think about how you, you know, how that's going to affect what's your goal for the next 10 years. Does that include having a dog? If it doesn't, if it doesn't include having a mint pin, then that's fine. You're not a bad person. You're better to do this up front than you are to try to come back later and kind of regret your decision. Okay, the next capacity I want you to think about with is, so if you're still with us and you've checked off the life capacity, the next one's gonna to need to be your mental capacity. Now, life capacity and mental capacity are very related. But when we're talking mental capacity, we're talking about even long lines of how do you problem solve things? So if you've never had a men pin, you know, never had a dog at all, you know, they are, you know, very rambunctious at times. They have issues. There's training needs. And like I said, some of that's going to tie into life capacity. But also just do you have the headspace in your life to kind of deal with those issues? You know, are you going to be game to kind of, you know, in a sense, outsmart your dog at times? Um, you know, are you emotionally ready right now? Is there a lot going on? You know, are you not really, you know, is your, like I said, that headspace not there for you to actually take care of that dog and dedicate yourself to that dog? Now it's often debated on, you know, you know, are these considered my kids or these, you know, whatever it may be. And I'm not necessarily, you know, tied to one camp on, hey, oh, this is a dog. So yeah, it's a dog. It's a little bit different than, you know, your child. At the same time, it is a commitment and it is a commitment, you know, in your mind as well. So when you are thinking and you're operating through your day, you have to kind of have that mental capacity and that mental fortitude to be able to handle a new puppy, the stress, the long hours and everything that comes if you want to have a well, you know, rounded, socialized dog as they get older. So if you don't have the emotional room in your head right now, if you don't have it in your life right now, then it's not the time to get a min pin. And once again, that's okay. 
It's you're not a bad person. You're actually a better person if you're choosing to wait, which is a valid decision to make and therefore come back later when you have the right mental capacity. Okay, so before we move on, hey, if you're getting value, make sure that you know and you want to have it. Another capacity that I didn't mention is that is the capacity to go ahead and hit the like button, right? Because that's what I need you to do because that way this video will zoom out and, you know, to all the other MinPin or future MinPin owners out there and they can really try to get this concept we're talking about today. Okay, so the third one we're going to talk about here is financial capacity. Now, once you've figured out that your life is, you know, ready, you've got room in your life, once you have room in your head, I mean, I hate to say it, you got to make sure you have room in your wallet for a min pin. And so there's a lot of different costs that you're going to be, you know, coming up against. And so, you know, kind of a quick overview of you here, because we have done other videos talking about the cost of a min pin. The, you know, one of the big ones is, is just the initial cost. Obviously, you're going to have to go buy the dog. You're going to have to buy the supplies that you're going to need, right? So you're talking, you know, a thousand dollars or more just to get the puppy, just to get them home, you know, to get yourself a crate, to get yourself some food, all those things. And so if you don't, especially if you've never had any of that stuff before, it can be a, you know, an upfront cost. So definitely, you know, look at your budget beforehand and see if that can be entered in there. Secondary, right? Once you have all that stuff and you say, hey, I got that money, you know, whatever it may be, however you got it. The next step is they now become a recurring line item in your budget. You know, so they're now, you know, the members of the family, you know, they're going to be on the grocery bill. So you're, you're going to have that, right? Then they're obviously going to be going to the vets, especially as puppies early on. They're going to be getting those, right? You know, and you probably should have a little some money sitting around kind of for an emergency because now, you know, they could have an emergency vet visit that costs a lot more, you know, if an accident happens or they come down with the, you know, some type of illness. So these reoccurring costs, you know, you, you may have to register them in the city, you know, which may only be $20, $30, but once again, it's a little bit extra money that is coming out of your pocket every year. So you can need to know that not only do you have the initial cost, but you also have that ongoing cost that you have to account for. So don't forget that ongoing cost there. And the last thing I would hit on here is if you're sitting there and you have a min pin and you already kind of know the cost, just know that you know, you are getting an additional dog. Now, obviously you had the initial stuff, so in a sense it won't be as much, but there are still some costs of, you know, more food and more vet bills and you know, all those little things. And obviously, you know, if you're buying something for one, you're probably gonna buy for the other two. So just keep that in mind. And all this, you know, goes with those first two. You have to make sure everything, one of these three things, you know, think of it like a three-legged stool. You know, if one leg is shorter than the other, right, what is gonna happen, it's gonna fall over. So make sure all three of these are balanced and that you have all three of these checked off between the life capacity, the mental capacity, and the financial capacity. And if you do that, I guarantee you will have success when it comes to owning a men pin. Hey, so if you're just getting started with the men pin, I recommend you go learn a little bit more about them. We did a video all about male versus female miniature pinchers. So start there and that will really help you in your journey on getting to understand this wonderful, fantastic breed. Thanks for being with us. If you got value, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and we'll see you in the next video.